Good afternoon. My name is Teresa Miller, and I have the privilege of serving as Secretary of the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services. This public health emergency has very suddenly disrupted all of our lives to some extent. But for many Pennsylvanians and their families, this crisis has disrupted their lives in significant and unexpected ways that none of us could have planned for. In a very short period of time, our economic reality has changed drastically. Thousands have lost jobs, income, and health insurance. So I want to take this opportunity to speak directly to Pennsylvanians. The Department of Human Services administers a safety net of programs that are designed to support Pennsylvanians and help them get through hard times. In a moment, I'm going to talk a bit more specifically about each of these programs. But first, I want to address one of the biggest barriers preventing people from accessing these critical resources, stigma. Until just a few years ago, the Department of Human Services was called the Department of Public Welfare. We finally changed that name because what most people think of as welfare does not exist anymore. With an exception for people on the very lowest end of the income spectrum, cash assistance programs have been mostly eliminated and do not function like they once did. Today, the Department of Human Services connects eligible Pennsylvanians directly to resources that everyone needs to survive. Food, health care, and energy to heat a home in the winter. These programs cannot sustain a family or an individual, but they can make it possible to survive a storm and see better days. If ever there was a moment for us all to appreciate the importance of a strong, stable, and sufficiently funded social safety net, I think this is that moment. These programs are needed for many in the best of times, and they are critical in the worst. We cannot forget this when this moment passes. DHS will be here to support Pennsylvanians through this public health crisis and in the weeks and months of rebuilding our economy that will follow. Pennsylvanians can apply for all of DHS's programs online at www.compass.state.pa.us. You do not need to know your own eligibility in order to apply for these programs. That's the role of DHS's Office of Income Maintenance, or OIM, which does the important work of processing applications and determining eligibility for these programs. There are county assistance offices in every Pennsylvania county staffed by caseworkers who are skilled at connecting individuals to benefits they need while also maintaining program integrity and the responsible stewardship of taxpayer dollars. I'm going to talk first about four programs that DHS always administers to Pennsylvanians in need of a helping hand. Then I'm going to talk about a few new programs that we developed to help families through this crisis specifically. The first two programs I want to talk about are Medicaid, or medical assistance, as we refer to it in Pennsylvania, and CHIP, which is the Children's Health Insurance Program. Eligibility for Medicaid is largely income-based, so it's important for folks who've recently lost jobs or experienced a reduction in hours to know that those circumstances may have triggered eligibility for Medicaid. CHIP, on the other hand, covers uninsured children and teens up to age 19 who are not eligible for Medicaid and who do not have other insurance. A family's income does factor into the cost for CHIP coverage, but it does not preclude eligibility. In other words, all children in Pennsylvania are eligible for health insurance coverage through CHIP and may be able to get coverage for a low monthly cost or no cost. The third program I want to mention is Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or TANF which is a cash assistance program for pregnant women and families with children on the very low end of the income spectrum. The average family of three receives just over $400 a month through TANF, a benefit that has not increased in more than 20 years. This is a modest benefit that comes with a time limit and work requirements, but it is there as a safety, as a crucial safety net for families with children. Finally, there's the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP and formerly known as food stamps. About 1.8 million Pennsylvanians buy some of their groceries with SNAP benefits. Almost 40% of beneficiaries are children, 
and about 38% are individuals with disabilities. SNAP is 100% federally funded, and it is an entitlement program. That means if you, are, if you apply and you're eligible, you are entitled to receive the benefit. That also means that your eligibility does not affect anyone else's ability to receive this benefit. If you are struggling to make ends meet, please apply for SNAP. You will not take anything away from anyone else. If you're determined eligible for SNAP, you're issued an EBT card to use as payment for groceries. There are limits on what you can buy with SNAP benefits. For example, you can't use SNAP to buy diapers or pay for food at a restaurant. SNAP applications can be expedited and issued in five days. And again, Pennsylvanians can apply for SNAP and the other programs I mentioned online at www.compass.state.pa.us. Now I wanna talk briefly about some of the temporary programs we've developed with our fellow state agencies and federal partners in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. DHS is working with utility companies and deliverable fuel vendors to help Pennsylvanians at risk of losing access to electricity, natural gas, or deliverable fuels such as oil. The LIHEAP Recovery Crisis Program offers a crisis benefit and a supplemental payment for households that previously received a crisis payment during the 2019-2020 LIHEAP season. The LIHEAP season normally runs through the winter months. We've developed this program to help families pay their utility bills right now. These benefits will be paid directly to utility companies or fuel providers, with a few exceptions, to help qualifying families offset costs for home utilities. Pennsylvanians may qualify for LIHEAP recovery crisis benefits if they were notified that their utility service will be shut off in the next 60 days, if they have had their main or secondary energy source completely shut off, if they're in danger of being without fuel in 15 days or less, or if they owe funds to a provider that would constitute a service termination if not for the Public Utility Commission's temporary moratorium on termination. The program will run through August 31st, 2020, or until all budgeted funding is expended. The maximum benefit for the LIHEAP Recovery Crisis Program is $800, and eligibility guidelines are the same as those used during the 2019-2020 LIHEAP season. The new Emergency Assistance Program, or EAP, provides a one-time cash benefit to families who've experienced a significant income reduction or complete job loss due to COVID-19. EAP is open to families with a child under age 18 or a woman who's currently pregnant and is designed to help families who may already be in a more stretched financial situation avoid long-term destabilization after a job loss or loss of income. Families must meet income and resource limits and also have at least one person who was employed as of March 11th of this year and lost employment or experienced an hour and wage reduction of at least 50% for at least two weeks due to the pandemic. Eligible families will receive a one-time payment based on household size. A family of three would get an average one-time payment of $806. And finally, this week, we've begun distributing food assistance dollars to families with school-aged children through a new program called the Pandemic Electronic Benefit Transfer Program, or PEBT. The Wolf Administration pursued and received approval from the United States Department of Agriculture to extend additional support to families with children who, when they're in school, receive free and reduced price meals through the National School Lunch Program. This program is temporary and designed to help bridge the gap left by schools closing due to the COVID-19 crisis, which is likely creating an additional strain on families' resources. In total, PEBT will help the families of more than 950,000 kids. Families will receive about $370 per child and benefits will be issued through an EBT card. If a family's economic situation has changed since school closures began, they can still apply for the National School Lunch Program and if determined eligible, receive PEBT benefits. Again, Pennsylvanians can apply for each of these programs online at www.compass.state.pa.us.
www.pennsylvaniaprivacy.us. At this critical moment, I want Pennsylvanians to know that the Department of Human Services is doing everything we can to connect families and individuals who are struggling economically with the programs that in many cases they have paid into for years. You may not think these programs are for you, but they can help make these difficult times a little easier. They can be a bridge to make sure you have health care, enough food to eat, and can pay your utilities until you return to work. These are things that we all need. Applying for a public assistance program during a time of crisis is an act of advocacy for yourself and your family. These programs exist to make our mo most difficult times a little bit easier, so no one has to go through the weeks and months ahead alone. There is no shame in asking for help when we need it. Before I take questions, there's just one more resource that I want to highlight. The uncertain economic climate is surely creating additional stress and anxiety for people around Pennsylvania. Resources are available in your community to help you meet these needs. In early April, DHS launched the Support and Referral Helpline, a free resource that connects callers to trained professionals who can listen and provide support if you or someone you know is struggling during this crisis. The helpline is there for anyone who needs help for whatever reason. If you are struggling with your mental health, you can call this helpline and someone will be on the other end to listen to you. This helpline can be reached toll free 24 seven at 1-855-284-2494. Again, that's 1-855-284-2494. For TTY, dial 724-631-5600. We're about to wrap up Mental Health Awareness Month, and while we weren't able to recognize this as we usually do, I want people to know that if you're experiencing stress, anxiety, or grief from what we've been facing, the Support and Referral Helpline can be a place for you to work through these feelings. No matter what challenges you're facing, you do not have to go at this alone. It's okay to ask for help because we can and we will get through this together. At this time, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Secretary. From the Pennsylvania Capital Star, why has Pennsylvania not yet released its federal funding for the pandemic EBT program to help families buy food for school children? And how much money did the state receive? And when does it expect to make disbursements? So the question is about uh, PEBT disbursements, and those disbursements will start going out later this week. Um, there was a lot of work that had to be done with the Department of Education to put this program together, um, and that funding will be going out later this week and then over the course of the month of June. In terms of the total amount of funding that will go out, I don't know that I have that off the top of my head, but we can certainly follow up and get that information. And uh, a viewer has asked, how can I apply if I don't have access to the internet? So people can also apply um, through paper applications, um, and they can just submit those applications to our county assistance offices. So that is one way they can do it. Um, otherwise, uh, compass.state.pa.us uh, is the best way to apply. Thank you, Secretary. Those are all of the questions that we have for today. If reporters have additional questions, please feel free to submit them to the Department of Human Services press office. To that concludes our briefing for today. Thank you.